Welcome everybody to the fifth edition of Experimental Venues Worldwide. I'm Melody Melak, co-founder of the A-Stream Collective, and I'm running Experimental Venues Worldwide with uh, Cédric Fermont. I'll just go ahead and introduce Cédric. Um, he's a composer, musician, independent researcher, concert organizer, curator. He co-wrote and was co-awarded the Golden Nika for the book Not Your World Music, Noise in Southeast Asia. He is the founder of the label SURF, a platform for electronic noise, avant-garde, contemporary industrial experimental, sound art and music. We created experimental venues worldwide because we wanted to connect with experimental scenes around the globe. And this week we are very excited to have uh, Habat Abbas and Ardi Koda from Kurdistan with us. And before Cédric goes on with the interview, I'd like to thank Rana Badikari and Elisabeth Glauser from Boiling Head, who make it all possible behind the scenes, and Sharon Tan, who did the beautiful graphic design and identity of the show. I'll be mainly checking the YouTube chat. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I'll transmit them to the artist after their live performance and throughout the second part of the interview. Cédric. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Melody, for the action. Um, so, first question to Hardy: um, Why did you choose this? We just heard uh, as an introduction. Pardon, if you repeat again the question: Why did I choose? <laughs> <laughs> How did you choose this piece we just heard uh, during the introduction? Ah. Yeah, it's a piece uh, by Klaus Hubner sound installation in the um, uh, last year festival of Space 21, which we made in uh, Hammam, a public bath. Um, this piece uh, explored a kind of um, uh, the acoustic, the room of the Hammam. Um, uh, of course, it will be different that you are in a space when you when you listen to this piece, your sound installation, and you get all those um, uh, resonances and uh, uh, rich sound vibration in the uh, in the hammam uh, than you hear now, just a, a recording. But this piece uh, uh, actually also choose because uh, 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 of kind of. Um, uh, I mean, the Space 21 is a, col is a collaborative project uh, between international and local artists. And Klaus Hubner was one of the artists which has been in Space 21 since the beginning. Uh, so I want to just to right. present also yeah, his work. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for you not know, read maybe about you too. <laughs> you are both from um, um, Eastern Kurdistan, Southeastern Kurdistan, so the the Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, both musicians, and how do you also an organizer behind the Space 21 um, festival that is supposed to happen every year? Well, except this year, of course. Um, you are both based now in Europe. And um, Hardy, could you tell us a bit about Space 21? Why is it called Space 21 Festival? And um, why did you and how did you decide to organize a festival in uh, Erbil and Slemani? Yeah, I mean, in the, uh, we did uh, many projects with Chabad uh, since 2008. So we've been uh, almost each year in Kurdistan and do project and just uh, search for the possibility what could be possible and what platform we use and what venues. Be honest, we always disappointed by what we did. So finally, we land to. Um, you know, we have it's not connected to, uh, uh, but we have new rules. Uh, uh, the celebrating of the new year, uh, which I like this concept uh, <clears throat> of twenty first of March, uh, and kind of space. Always space was kind of this question for me to investigate. Uh, to uh, discover, so not just creating the music or sound, but also uh, um, uh, kind of exploring spaces. 
Um, that was so, so Space 21, it's, uh, I have a vision, I don't know if that's coming the true in the future, if we could in the future um, occupy 21 spaces during the week and have very weird and very um, uh, spaces that's not been explored uh, or not been used as like a hammam, never been used as a space for, for artistic venue. Uh, which also have kind of challenges. So Space 21, it's a kind of idea for renovating new idea, new music, new sound, new collaborations. So that's uh, all the idea. All right, thank you. Habat, you are, uh, mm, I think, the only woman I know from uh, this part of Kurdistan who is active in the field of uh, improvising, experimental music and so on. Nevertheless, when I was uh, uh, attending and performing at the festival two years ago, I was surprised to see um, how women were involved in the society in Kordan, much more than what people think. It was election time, and I remember that half of the um, uh, propaganda was for, for elections, women, for example. And I saw a lot of freedom regarding women in, in Kurdistan. Could you tell a tiny bit about this? And what led you to uh, compose, um, well, compose, do free improvised music and so on? <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, uh, in Kurdistan, is, um, we have a freedom as a, as a woman, but we have a still part which is uh, Woman is not free, as uh, we see it, but uh, especially in the towns um, uh, of Kurdistan. Uh, but um, in my case, when I I am um, improvising, so especially free improvisation, so it's like a kind of freedom for me, which maybe can connect with the woman in this kind of space, but. Uh, and uh, because I grew up in this environment, which is was like uh, war always, and then the sound was not exactly the sound that because I am class, I was classic cellist, so it's like it was like a diversity between what we I am living and what I am playing as a cl uh, classical cellist, and then I thought maybe. I don't know. So I, uh, after a few years, study with the classical and classical cello, and then uh, I explore more, more. I feel more independent in the in the in the when I am improvising, free improvising, or experimenting in general with the with the cello, because uh, a, now I am more experimenting with the material and uh, reshape it, and the, more more connected with this how material connect with me. Uh, and how material respond what I am doing or playing. All right. Speaking about reshaping, you you have some very special cello you built by yourself. Could you tell us a bit about those? Yeah, uh, actually, I have um, uh, experiment with the two different cello, one with the two different material, which is I reshape it in the cello form. One is a, uh, is a kind of skin, uh, animal skin, but uh, in the deaf idea come from deaf, which is the Kurdish percussion. And then uh, uh, I, I was always, because I had an instrument, the, the idea come from how deconstruct the cello, the Western classical cello to this instrument, which is cannot tune it, which is the basic thing in the, in the cello is tuning. And the sound is not stable, which is exactly the opposite the the cello, uh, and um, and I did this experiment is like two thousand sixteen, and uh, last year I did a new experiment with the shell bomb, which is I reshape it to the cello, uh, which um, it's a little bit strange instrument, <laughs> uh, and. Um, uh, I uh, in this uh, instrument actually is a two kind of uh, idea or context in this one is the uh, I'm criticizing the the form that the form have a power 
can I legalize the material to to take it from Kurdistan, transport it from Kurdistan to you, now in UK. So transported this material from Kurdistan, which is the material if I have the material as it is, I cannot transport it because it's illegal shell bomb. But when the form give this power, and it's a, like a question critic uh, of the form of Western classical instrument that society have this kind of uh, idea. This is a instrument and they can legalize everything. And as a sound is um, really, uh, it's not responding and it is uh, metallic and uh, and all my ideas are how agency of the material and me working together and what I'm doing and what's the feedback of the instrument. All right, thank you. <laughs> and uh, switching back to um, switching back to Hardy, you also modify your uh, violin and you don't play it in a very conventional way. Yeah, it's actually uh, it comes uh, from uh, it's my violin. Uh, um, of course, I played violin for a long time, but yeah, I played also viola sometimes. Um, so before we moved to London uh, from Sweden, I had a very special case when I left my violin in a, a Swedish uh, string shop in in Gothenburg. And yeah, it had a very tragic situation with this violin, which I had for 25 years or uh, years and playing with this instrument. So it was kind of part of me. So I'd been studying in, in like 12 hours. Uh, so this kind of uh, story behind this violin make me to uh, change this viola. I don't want this, I have this, this left, so I don't want to be stolen this one as well. So I made it, I boiled hole in the, in the uh, appens, uh, the, the box and I put string, spr springs and I put radio, small secret radios. Actually the whole this radio, which I call it radiola springs, it's been developed since when, during the radio residency program I had in Hala uh, in March. So yeah, so this kind of, the idea it's yeah kind of um we'll say uh try to find another relationship with the with the instrument all right yeah and you do keep a strong connection with kurdistan not only because you play there or organizing but um how about is uh, made those cellos uh, uh one with a skin a bit like a dove the other one with the drum, and you, uh, how do you use this carpet we can see uh, to you uh, during yeah, the festival and the, in, in, the, um, in um, Slimani and Erbil, uh, electronic circuits to make sound. Could you describe the project behind it? Yeah, this carpet, which you see here, I have it. Uh, it's a, I can show you this whole, it's a kind of face uh, with a very deep inside, uh, very uh, fragmented uh, images. So the whole idea behind when I take it from the, a gleam actually from the, um, uh, from uh, a Kurdish gleam, which is a many symbols. One of these symbols, this face is very small in the gleam. But it really took my attention. When I look at very close, it showed me different. It was not a face. It was a, many other things like trees, birds, you know. But when I look at it in the distance, I see the face. And uh, the thing is that it's a storytelling. It's not like the Kurdish carpet. It's not like other carpet, like Iranian carpets or uh, Turkish carpet. Um, they are more symmetric uh, carpets. But the Kurdish carpet, it's more storytelling and very small carpets and gleams because uh, Kurdish always, society always was kind of nomadic in between those countries. So they move it. So they didn't have opportunity to make a big carpet. So they had a small and they always make their stories in this carpet. So that's why they were, was very interested to 
transform it to experience those stories through when you touch it. And it's a, a conductive thread inside the carpet. I made this new one from the Kurdish um, handmade maker, carpet maker. Um, so I put the thread inside and it's connected to an open source and going to Max and able to live. Uh, but when they touch it, there's a very based on a very um, uh, possibilities. So it's not always responding same. And the sound design, it yeah. depend on, so I can change it where, how, how I want. But the whole idea is to dig in for the story history, so, because it's uh, telling about the past. So it's the listener listen to either through the headphones or just, of course, we can also do it in the speakers. But the idea is it must be digging inside the carpet with your finger in order to get touch with the sound. And through this, you experience this kind of interactive relationship with the carpet, which is not usual in Kurdistan they have, or normally we don't use carpet in this way. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, now we should listen to a bit of your music, right? Yeah. Our last session. All right. Here we go. Yeah.
So we are online now. Yes, it seems so. <laughs> All right. Thank so. you a lot for the music. Uh, and uh, following this, uh, switch back a tiny bit to uh, the festival and to um, Kurdistan and the region. Um, so when I came to Kurdistan two years ago, before that I was in uh, Lebanon, also born, and um, Sharif Sahnawi, uh, who is one of the persons behind uh, the festival Irtija Beirut and also an improviser, um, didn't know uh, about the existence of this festival and he told me he was very interested in making connections. Um, I realized that there are quite a lot of connections being made between the Arab world, so to speak, North Africa and the Middle East, especially Egypt and um, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, uh, Palestine, and at some point, which is not part of the Arab world. But then with Kurdistan and Iran, it's another story. And also, so I realized when um, I was at the, the festival, um, when we spoke with uh, Ali Ahmad, uh, an, a nice musician from uh, Erbil, he told me he was surprised that there were so many people doing um, electronic experimental music, ambient music in Iran, and vice versa. My friends in Iran were surprised. Meanwhile, uh, Sharif and you have been in touch. Sharif also attended the festival. And uh, other nations from Iran are interested in the festival, like uh, Sohail Soheli, for example. Uh, so you're also trying to build connections, you too, with the region and your music yeah. festival. When the yeah. question is addressed to you, to me to answer. What, what was the question? <laughs> no, so so you, you are trying to connect people from the region basically uh, mm. and also to um, obviously start something in, in Kurdistan there is not so much happening right now due to the right social situation the political situation and so on mm. but you are still trying to mm. build something but that's right. not only with the western world but with people from the region also that's that's true uh, yeah I mean the uh, we have this uh, idea uh, to first focus on what's happening around, what's happening in Iran, in, uh, in Beirut, and even in Baghdad. There's uh, many interesting artists in Baghdad, but we don't know them, and they don't know us. Um, of course, uh, we are not, uh, um, I mean, not just focusing on international artists. Uh, we are trying to kind of find this platform that's first working with the neighbors who can um, venues that they are also have this kind of uh, uh, events uh, this kind of um, um, experimental uh, background uh, because uh, one thing from my experience that's when you invite international artists uh, one thing that's become um, kind of clash with the local artists that they see so far between the cultures uh, from culture aspect, uh, like, okay, you know, it's in Germany or in uh, UK or Sweden, whatever, they have a different culture background and they have a history of uh, experimental avant-garde music, blah, blah, blah. But when it's come to the neighborhood countries, they don't know that actually those events, those music exist and they are actually have their own platform. So in somehow kind of encourage uh, local artists that it's not just from the internet European countries or the, from the West it's also around us but how you can and also the the the, uh, the mentalities the how the artists also uh, using the cultural materials or thinking is quite close so there, there's, uh, there will not be a big gap between uh, uh, the artists when they when they talk. Uh, like I had in the Western and in Kurdistan. Sometimes it was the idea was really far from each other's. I mean, yeah, it still is very interesting to share the experience, but the understanding was not clear. We take an example now, 
Sharif and what's happening in, in Beirut, uh, it's very obvious for us and very clear. We have this experience. So we very, it's different to understand Sharif than understand uh, another artist from Europe. So that's why we more focus on, on this. And, um, uh, and uh, also must say that uh, those artists uh, from neighborhood that you mentioned, both Sharif and Sohail, they are really nice persons. So they are not just want to come play, but also want to support these kind of venues. Uh, so that's also give a um, uh, kind of strong links that we believe that we can make something uh, together for future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And uh, how about, uh, what were your challenges uh, when you were in Kurdistan and doing performances? Regarding the audience, uh, what were those reactions uh, regarding your, your music, regarding the fact that you are a woman in the field of improvised music? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, as I didn't think about it as a woman's so main focus as a woman, but as a, as a music, I just more focused on, on what I am doing. Uh, because this feeling when uh, I grew in the family that uh, I didn't feel that I am different or I am woman. So just I had this independent and when, yeah. Uh, but, but it's a little bit difficult to understand what this kind of music because uh, the thing that I'm always, yeah, clashing with this or discussion uh, about this one, we don't have this knowledge about different genre of music we 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 miss this kind of and we don't evaluate this as a music that free improvisation or experimental so we we just uh, undervalue this this kind of music and which is uh, i don't know why i i just connected with the knowledge that we don't have it or we don't understand it is not available there. Uh, so this is the main problem I had it, but um, with the venue that we played almost most of uh, work uh, I played with Herdy and we we did in the Herdy one of the hardest project was in the bus which is we did and the the local people more accepted what uh, you are doing uh, uh, than the artist because I don't know why, maybe I, I know, I don't know, but it's uh, some kind of... The artists know they have a knowledge about something, which is different genre, but the local people, they know that they don't know about the genre when something is happened. So they, they, they have attention for. They're just listening. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, they just exactly, yeah. which is mm. which is this is important, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they are not evaluating how the, yeah, uh, or where where they put it. So they are not thinking about what do you playing. They are just listening, and that's what is actually required. It. Yeah. Yes, uh, I remember uh, that people attended and were focusing on what we we were doing. That was very interesting and not running away. And speaking about listening, uh, by the end of the year, you are going to do a radio uh, event regarding the festival uh, in December. Could you speak about it? Uh, yeah, because we uh, we lost, uh, uh, we postponed the uh, April festival like the other venues uh, because of COVID. Uh, so we try to kind of. Uh, replaced to uh, another event, uh, which is uh, now radio medium become very uh, focused and many radio projects around the world. Uh, so we use this uh, uh, medium also to uh, to find uh, kind of connecting, reconnecting again with the audience in Kurdistan. So the radio festival happening in December, middle of December, uh, we are not uh, uh, announcing the artist, but it will come soon in around the um, beginning of uh, November. Uh, it's uh, it's about five days, 
we try to still use the public spaces as much as we can. We are now working on it very hard. It's not easy, but um, the the content of the projects or the days. It's uh, one day we talk about the noise and the sound art, and the other day we talk about sound and gender, which is how much a part of this project. And we talk about also program about the art in time of Corona. And one also the issues that we have in Kurdistan is art education and children, which that we believe that children is our future audience. So we need to work on it. Uh, then we have uh, the most interesting day, the last day, which is uh, uh, the, the fiction future of Kurdistan. I mean, we because the political situation in Kurdistan always make it very impossible to be a country. Uh, but what if we imagine that we are a country? What, what what could be? I mean, how? So we try to open this kind of imagining Kurdistan future of Kurdistan. Uh, and uh, regarding uh, the the the, the um, Broadcasting, as I mentioned, uh, we try to use a uh, local bus uh, just to have a very, um, have a small radio station in the bus and just turning in the, touring in the city and making a map for frequencies so that the audience can follow the, the bus in order to get the frequencies to listen to the program. <clears throat> kind of another way to adjust ourselves or find a creative way how audience listen to us in this time time of corona which is not possible to be gathered and the other option we have it's uh, we try to use the studio shop in the city we are not uh, confirm it yet but this is an idea which is make it possible and um, very interesting to get the, the local shop involved in that's all the idea of space 21 to not create one but but using the already existed venues places uh, and turn it to a different listening experience. Uh, so that's uh, all about the, uh, the Radio Art Festival in December. We hope we can make it. We will see. We have um, a little uh, technical difficulty with uh, Cedric, who is uh, frozen right now. Um, um, while he's uh, managing it, maybe we can watch a, a short video that was uh, shot during the Space 21 festival. <coughs> yeah. All right, thank you for this. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> I was not sure. Um, um, so, uh, do you think this event, the short extract we saw now, this live interaction with the public, uh, um, may have triggered something over there? 
that maybe some young people from Kurdistan now are um, perhaps working some hard work learning about it and would this maybe oh. lead to a new generation of sound artists and experimental music artists in in questions yeah. for both of you <laughs> yeah you can answer yeah, yeah. Uh, I, actually um, i hope because uh, uh, through this year's heavy um, uh, work with the space Studio, which is i didn't have the chance to do before that uh, and uh, i think many young um women and uh, men so interested in this uh, genre and this uh, kind of music and uh, it it gives hope for future so we will see and <laughs> yes yeah i mean uh, we try <clears throat> yeah we try as much uh, as much uh, uh, to focus on the local audience so i'm actually not too much into the artist itself uh, um, because I tried that before um, um, so instead like focusing on the audience that we need an audience to understand this music and uh, you see in the also the video um, I need uh, any kind of uh, first to connect uh, the venue to the local audience then it will automatically show the artist <clears throat> what actually we miss with our audience uh, and that's what we need all together to work on it not just me uh, so yeah mm. as Chabad also mentioned that there is there is uh, hope there is artists very interested those young artists especially that we did this performance together uh, they come from different backgrounds um, but uh, when it's come to sound they were they had a really interesting different opinion um, so and also the venue as a hammam, that, that's why we also focus on the places that people have a relationship. So they already, they have in their baggage, they have a story about sound related to the place. So I don't need to tell them too much. I just open the platform and we explore uh, each of us from their own, own experience. All right. Thank you a lot for the information. And um, so you are nevertheless still expecting to organize the festival next year in, in April, if everything works fine. Um, yes. And you are more regularly being connected with people there to set up. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so you you can expect to have a real strong team now over there that could help uh, over time, basically. Yeah, actually, we have already mm -hmm. now. Uh, uh, we have five people. I'm working here. Two from uh, Berlin: Abel uh, Kolniski and uh, Klaus Ubner. Uh, why we choose them is they are. Uh, they've been part in, in the project, so they know they have an idea how how to work in Kurdistan. Uh, and there is two uh, girls, um, Niga Salam and Khanda Sachel. They are, have a different background, artist and culture manager. Uh, so they are, um, and they are young as well. They are very interested in art. So they understand all the concept. So we hopefully we all together uh, kind of building a strong team that uh, can continually work uh, year by year uh, and build this right. uh, this stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the festival happened mostly in uh, Slimani and uh, Bill, but once also in Dohuk, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, did you still plan to do it in, in several cities or do you want to just limit yourself to uh, one place? Actually, we did first in all of three cities. Uh, I just wanted just to explore what is responding more and with the ability or possibility to explore where it will be possible. Or it was an experiment from beginning until still now. Um, 
uh, but now we're trying to focus on one city instead to have a several cities uh, because we have a very small team and very little budget or sometimes no budget so uh, we're focusing on one place to just establish something then as i mentioned before the vision of space 21 hopefully it will it will land to 21 spaces in one week or several days i don't know but of course it's, it's all depending on on uh, on that possibility of the team how how much this team can can manage several places at the same time but in in the case of a radio festival in december we try to to do it in all three cities when we have the bus so the bus can travel between the cities uh, it's also a matter of of the the covid situation because now the the border in between the cities been closed and very strict so it's yeah mm. but we have we have the vision yeah absolutely if it's possible we can we can spread this but I'm really also yeah, happy right. to to see other venues open, so not, so not just Space 21. I mean, the, I always say to the uh, young artists, I mean, create your own, do your own as well. Uh, we have this one, but we don't need to have this one as a main. Uh, it's kind of encouraging to have a small venues as well. I understand. So you you mentioned us. Uh, could, could you explain a bit the listeners uh, the, the concept of this traveling? Uh, with the sound. Uh, yeah, I had this idea actually when I when I was in the Radio Art Residency in Halle. Um, kind of, uh, there, there's many aspects that can just, uh, uh, how to reach audience, first of all, and how the radio kind of uh, create this uh, ghost voice, which is going between the cities or how the radio can express the nomad society, like a Kurdish society, which has been always traveling. Uh, can, there is a many aspect of this. And also, we are very interested not just to meet artists, also between the cities, uh, just to improvise with the audience. You've been also there, how it was this kind of experience, traveling with the bus to different places. Just imagine if you had a radio, so we could just broadcast it all the meetings with the local people, their opinions. So kind of this uh, radio become more uh, sending these voices, which is uh, not possible to hear it uh, anywhere uh, or not in the conventional radio as well. Uh, so kind of improvising with the space, improvising with the, with all the, all the environment to see what we can explore. All right. Yeah. Thank you a lot for nations. Uh, I think we are Thank reaching you. the end. Uh, um, Melody, do we have any questions on YouTube or? No, all right. We don't. <laughs> People okay, are chatting enough. with each other, but uh, they don't, they're not asking <laughs> questions. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Um, I think, yeah, that's it. But uh, thank you both of you. Uh, this thank you for inviting us and the uh, music. You know, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, um, well, I wish the best for the future. I keep an eye on you anyway. <laughs> and, thank you. Uh, we don't know yet when the next show uh, will be and with whom, but uh, <laughs> just follow us on um, YouTube or Facebook. Uh, outside and uh, you will see what is going to happen in October. Melody, maybe you have a, a, a <laughs> tiny bit more info regarding this. I'm sorry to ask. <laughs> um, no, there's, there's no information yet about the, the next show. I guess it will be towards the end of October. Um, I would also like to thank you, Habat and Ardi, for joining us. Um, Thank you. People now on YouTube are actually commenting about how young the audience was on the video that we saw about the festival. Um, yeah. They, they wonder how that happened. <laughs> yeah, we just we just invite them. That's a neighborhood uh, people, youngs around the hammam. So we are not made advertising in anywhere.
we just invite a, a very close people around what's happening in the hammam, which was also very emotional and very, very curious listener. And they coming back each day, uh, actually in seven days, they coming back each day and say like, uh, can, can we listen this day as well? I said, of course it's open. You can listen every day. So, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and this, uh, yeah, because it, well, one thing that's a very important, the, the media in Kurdistan actually broadcasting all the cultural event when the politician in the opening the concert or opening the gallery. So those local people actually don't see the culture as a part of, of, of their life. So when you give them this kind of open this opportunity to explore, to, to, uh, to take these things that they are missing their life, they, they will really appreciate it, much more appreciated than ever. Yeah. And that's our aim. Yeah. And um, we will have a, a closing track um, after we say goodbye. And it's a collaboration between artists that also happened during the festival, if I understood correctly. Can you say yeah. something about that, Hardy? Uh, uh, the one uh, uh, with uh, Sharif. Uh... The yeah, the collaborate the artist collaboration. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The artist collaboration. It uh, was uh, um, uh, in the very beginning of the festival. We did me and the class. Now we did a workshop for the local artists. Uh, that we could um, and somehow uh, explore the hammam with their own materials. So uh, we spent several days uh, exploring and tell stories about the hammam, about the sound, and then we come to uh, kind of uh, uh, together we come to a form of how we perform. And uh, the funny things was we performed during the day seven times. Uh, so we kind of, uh, you know, the buses in Kurdistan works very strange. There's no timetables. Uh, they're waiting for the buses get full and then they drive. I know maybe said, you know, uh, uh, kind of the situation in other countries. So we did, we did quite the same. So we, we, we opened the, the hammam uh, in the, between like two and six o'clock. And we say like, okay, now we have 10 audience. Let's go in and play. So kind of this. Uh, 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 situation of uh, which was not normal. So we played sometimes. Yeah, we played seven seven times, I guess, uh, during this day. Uh, but this this one, it's a short uh, of one of those seven times. Yeah. Great. So we're going to listen to it as a as we say goodbye. Thank you again yeah. for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Everybody so much. who joined us. Thank you.